the customs warehouse. Better get looking for those mushrooms. I know. That's why I'm bringing it up. What if she, uh, I don't know, what had climbed through these mushrooms? <laughs> 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 Wine and wild mushrooms. That's all of it. I should go to the girl and the witch at the temple.
Here's everything you asked for. <sighs> Thank you, Mistios. Now I just need a more personal artifact. The last ingredient. I've come this far. I'll see it through. What else do you need, witch? No, no. What I need, the girl can provide. I'll give you whatever you need to be with Etios. We'll just need a little snip of your beautiful locks. Your part in this is done, Mistios. Come to the selection ceremony at Aetios' house to witness the fruits of your labor. It's the one overlooking the sea. You've got to come! Once Etios picks me, I'll make sure to pay you your due. I hope he has deep pockets. His love didn't come cheap. Come. There's much left to do. See you at the ceremony, Mistios. Some peasants need my attention. You said a little bit of her hair. Explain this. <laughs> Explain? It's clear, beautiful, gullible, idiot girl falls prey to her competition. She set me up! Etios picked her instead! He, he didn't even take a second look at me. Why would you do such a thing? Aetios can be no one's but mine. I'm the one who truly loves him. I grew up with him. I've always been the one looking out for him. You think I'd let some starry-eyed fledgling after his wealth steal the love of my life from me? Aetios doesn't know what's good for him. He's been eyeing this one for a while now. He liked the way she looked. So I changed that. <laughs> What happened to the potion? Why, she drank it. And look, it worked wonderfully. <laughs> she added the lock of my hair to the potion and then made me drink it. I didn't feel anything strange at the time, but when I did, all my hair, it just began to fall off. What trickery is this? You used her hair in a spell? A spell? Are you idiots? If only something so convenient existed. It's simple alchemy. With a little knowledge of poisonous local flora, anything is possible. And wild mushrooms are known to cause violent reactions. But honestly, I've never seen anyone go bald. Just a horrible rush at best. This went better than I expected. <laughs> I was promised to rock me. Just give it to me. I didn't sign up for any of this drama. Technically, the girl asked you for the items, not me. She's making fools of us both! Kill her, Mistios! You're crazy. 
You'll pay for this. She played the game and she lost. There's nothing to pay for. You believe she's innocent in all this? She tried to get ahead with magic. So spare me the hypocrisy. Just leave and take your bald friend with you. Please, Mistyos, do something. I'll cut through every last one of your guards to get to you. Guards, stop this, Mistyos! <laughs> <laughs> What have you done to my wife? I don't know.
What's a little girl doing in a clay pit? Oh, Mistios. Hi, Mistios. I'm just preparing something for my friends. I've been here all day, but I still need more clay. I need enough for all of them. What you're doing for your friends is very nice. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Really? You think so? I was thinking of getting them some other things, though. You're a generous friend. What do you want to give them? I want to give them some nice jewelry. <laughs> you mean jewelry? That's what I said. You don't look like you can afford any. Honestly. I know. That's why I was going to get some shiny stones in the abandoned mines. And a few pearls from the lagoon. But I've been stuck here all day with the clay. And the abandoned mines are kind of scary. Do you think you could help me get some gifts for my friends? It makes them happy, and that'll make me happy. I'll make some gooey for you, too, for helping me. Gladly, young lady. I'll see to it you get the best pearls and shiny stones. And I wouldn't mind some gooey myself. Yay! Thank you. You're really nice for a big, scary-looking person. These pearls you talked about, where can I find them? North of the clay pits, in the lagoon. They're just sitting there in the water, but there are some big sharks in there. Be careful. Where are these abandoned mines with your shiny stones? The mine is in the meadow, west of the temple. I'll see what I can find. Where are all your friends? They'll be coming soon, just a little longer. Speak up, child. I can't hear you. Never mind. I'll introduce you to them later. Okay. That's all I need to know. I'll see you later. I should be done here soon. Meet me at the cliff overlooking the lagoon, okay? I'll introduce you to my friends. Thanks, Mithios. That's the lagoon with the pearls. <laughs> this is the lagoon, a little.
That's enough pearls. Mines, that's where the shiny stones are. Abandoned mines with the shiny stones. Got the pearls and the shiny stones. I should return to the little girl. The little girl and her friends. She got here sooner than I thought she would. Silly Theo, don't put that in your hair. Mistios! You made it just in time! My friends have finally arrived! I... don't see anyone else here but us. <laughs> what? Silly Mistios, can't you see them? They're right over there! The one on the left is Theo, and the one on the right is Erla. They look friendly, but I don't think they really count as your friends. What do you mean? They're my friends. I made them. I know you made them, but that... that... Mata told me to make friends, Mistyos, and I did. This isn't the way to make friends. Tell your mother that... I can't! 
She's dead, mis Dios. My daughter is dead. She joined the pirates. Told me she'll bring back so much drachmi. We could swim in it. But, but, but one day she came back, mis Dios. Her favorite white robe was all red. And she told me to take care of myself and make more friends. But I've never had any friends. I didn't know what she meant. So I thought really, really hard and made my friends out of clay. Did I make a mistake? Mother won't be upset at me, right? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. No, child, no. You did great. Your mother would be proud of you. Friends come in all shapes and sizes. I have an eagle, and he's a close friend of mine. Wow, really? That's so cool. Here you go. Your gifts for your friends as promised. Why don't you go put them on for them? I'm sure they'll like that. Thank you, Miss Dios. You're the best. I'll go do that right now. <sighs> I'm sorry, child. I could not break your heart. Even if it was good for you. Check in on her later. Come on.
go.
Lucius, it's you! Phoebe! You promised we'd see each other again, and now we have! I also said stay out of trouble. Which I have! Okay, almost out of trouble. How did you even get here, Phoebe? Well, I did make some draft me working for Marcos. So you paid someone to bring you to Athens? Not exactly. Phoebe... I needed a drachmi for when I arrived. I couldn't use it all to leave, and I didn't want to wait any longer. So I sneaked on a ship. Don't worry, nobody saw. I just can't believe you made it. I don't remember much of Athens from when I was a baby. But every once in a while, something feels familiar. It's nice. I can't believe you're here. Me either. I can't believe we both made it to Athens. It's so much different from Kefalonia. But what are you doing here? I'm here to get you ready. I have to make sure you leave all your weapons and change into these clothes. So, you somehow work here? For Pericles? No, for Aspasia. I don't understand why I have to change. It's just what you do here. I felt weird at first, but you forget about it pretty fast. And my weapons? Don't worry. I'll take care of them. You don't want to scare people in there. Well... How is it you're working for Aspasia? Well, I did get into a little bit of trouble after I got to Athens. I may have been a leader of a small group of orphans that tried to cheat Aspasia. We didn't know it was her, though. And you convinced her to hire you? No. She asked me on her own. That was lucky. I think I'm ready to go in. You can't. Not like that, anyway. The Athenians like it best when you try to fit in. But don't worry, I have just the outfit for you. There's no way I'm wearing that. But if you don't... I mean it, Phoebe. You have to leave your weapons here, though. Fine. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is that everything? You're all ready to go in. Don't worry. You've done scarier things than this. I'm struggling to think of any right now. Are you sure I can't keep just one weapon with me? No weapons. Now hurry and go in. Oh, and don't leave without saying bye. You just got here. You can't leave already. Here, Alexios. The mighty mercenary and traveler has finally made his grand entrance. Only slightly late, too. Herodotus. Athenians have no problem letting me know when I'm not welcome. It's a relief to see your friendly face. Don't let the company here tonight intimidate you. I won't. Pericles is no king. He needs these guests to love him so that the people love him. And they, in turn, need Pericles. You're not different from any of them. Do you really think these people will help me? Perhaps your individual fashion sense would get their memories working. Now then, let me introduce you to everyone. They may not look it, but this group holds the way to the future on the tip of their opinionated tongues. Ah, Sophocles and Euripides, for example. Two of the most celebrated playwrights to date. No one can throw stones as far as they can. They appear to be locked in some kind of intellectual struggle, as is their way. He's a writer of comedies, of all things. Comedies, every pedis. <laughs> <laughs> Looks more like a lover's quarrel to me. Hermipos has also written his fair share of comedies. You should drink more. Lately, his attitudes have garnered him more notice than his works. However, the fellow beside him, Protagoras, is a sophist worthy of as much praise as the great Socrates himself. Inviting Socrates seems like a good way to ruin everyone's night. I'm surprised they would let him in the door. 
Oh, don't let Socrates get under your skin. At least he wore shoes for the occasion. And the poor thing gesticulating like an ape is Thrasymachus. If you listen closely, you'll notice he and Socrates are actually arguing the same points. But the wind from his wild gestures deafens him to critique. That isn't at all what I mean. Where is Pericles? Oh, he never attends his own parties. Which reminds me, there's something I need to get his help with. Vile Socrates, always appearing where I least expect him. Warrior, protect me from his amorous gaze. Oh, Alcibiades, this is not a time for jealousy, but for love. Let's not use Alcibiades as an example. Be good, and don't drink too much. So, tell me, what does a Mystios like you think of a party like this? This party could be fun. Alcibiades drinks like a Spartan. Maybe he fights like one too. If I could suggest anything, please don't start a fight. Or end one. Thank you, Herodotos. Now, if you'll excuse me, Pericles is here somewhere, and I need to prepare him. If he's alone, I'll tell him what your sister said. Agreed. Pericles needs to know. I'll stay here and look for clues. I hope they know something about your mother. Me too. Yes, you... Amistios in Pericles' abode? <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. You must have seen me doing my impression of Hermippus. I call it the dejected weasel. <laughs> Tell me, what does it think? Did you just call me... It? Watch your mouth, Athenian. It speaks, and so feisty too. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doomed to be the only young and beautiful thing here. So, what do they call you? Alexios. Hmm, I wouldn't peg you as an Alexios. But never mind. I'm Aristophanes, and this man is Evripides. Oh, go on. Introduce yourself. I'm Evripides. For a playwright, you're not much for words. Good men lead quiet lives, as old Evripides likes to say. Don't you, Evripides? Now, if you'll excuse us, I was just about to dazzle this old dog with my impression of Pericles. I call it the wooden board. The man is your host. Under every stone hides a politician, I always say. And Pericles is no different. Perhaps later. First, explain to me your point again. And so it isn't the rich and powerful, but the gods who are the source of justice? What? No! Have you been listening to nothing I say? I only use these terms, war, gods, civility, etc., in context of what we can observe. I can see soldiers fighting, sure. But does that really bring me any closer to understanding war? A mystios? At this party? Well, at least you're someone new to talk to. Sure, we can talk. What about? Before Protagoras changed the subject, we were talking about the next great leader of Athens, Cleon. I'll change the subject again. I'm looking for someone, a Spartan woman. Spartan? Hopefully she's dead in the gutters. It's better than those mongrels deserve. I wonder if you found the woman, even if you saw her with your own eyes, would you believe her existence to be true? This is getting nowhere. Forget it. If you don't want to discuss that, then what? 
If you're an ally of Cleon, why would Pericles invite you? You're not from Athens, outsider. Here, we keep our enemies closest of all. Why isn't Aspasia here? Can you be certain she isn't? To observe her presence is still no guarantee that she is here. In my opinion, it's just like her to cower in the shadows while we stand out here in the light. This has been useless, Chiare. <laughs> Amistios? Here? I suppose they've sent you to mock me for my fight with Evripides. I've seen lots of fights. That wasn't one. <laughs> I really made a fool of myself this time, didn't I? I'm Sophocles, though I'm sure you knew that. And you are? I am looking for information that'll help me find someone. A Spartan woman. Mm, a Spartan woman in Athens. Sounds intriguing. Though, if you expect me to notice someone other than myself, you expect too much. You could talk to Evripides. He's the second most worldly man here. That pediculous Xanthodontus Exothalmic Morosov. But he doesn't talk without a drink. I have no idea what that meant. No, you don't. So, we get him drunk, and he talks. He sounds more Argive than Athenian. Impressive, foreigner. Evripides is from Argos. All right. If nothing else, this party could use the help. You need to pick the right wine for this task. The kitchen should have what you need. Let me know when Evripides is done in, and I'll slip away unseen. How do you know Pericles? I believe you mean to ask me, how does Pericles know you? I'm the greatest dramatist in the land, mentor to Evripides, lover of Asclepios, father of theater, and so on, and so on. I'm sure it's a real honor to have you hiding in his kitchen. You're awfully worked up over Evripides. You sure you're just friends? I'm never just anything, foreigner. Though I confess, Evripides and I hold a bond deeper than brotherhood. Why he slams it with a banal young plaything, Aristophanes, I will never know. I'll get the wine. Wonderful. Now, if you want some friendly advice, Aristophanes cannot stand sweet wine. I've seen what it can do to him. Absolutely, horrifyingly delightful. It wouldn't be a party without someone losing their stomach. I'll let you know if your plan worked. You, you shouldn't be in here. What do you want? I've come to get your finest dry wine. Yes, take it. But get out of my kitchen. I'm very busy, you know. It's come back for more. Care to see my impression of Protagoras? I call it the flapping bladder. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't. When I need to relax, I start to fight. For you, though. Quickly! Bring him some wine so that he might say something clever. After my argument with Sophocles, I think I'd rather keep my head clear. I'm only here because I'm searching for someone. And yet it gave us the distinct impression it was here to fill our wine. Let's focus on that first, shall we? You and Aristophanes could both use a drink. Let's play a game. A competition? Ah, wonderful idea. Every pity seems quiet, but he never turns down a challenge. Well, if you brought us some wine, I wouldn't be opposed to showing this young one how we are gives drink. Why don't you just apologize to Sophocles? It's he who should apologize to you. Sophocles is a friend, and one good friend is worth an entire family. He just needs time to recover from his outburst. 
Pericles has invited all of you here for some reason. Either we dine here and praise Pericles, or we dine with Cleon. But Cleon has all the charm of a typical politician. A horrible voice, bad breeding, and vulgar manners. To Dionysos! This... this is delicious! This is nectar of the gods. Another round! How about some more? Where did you find this delicious wine? It must be Pericles' finest. You know what they say, good wine makes good friends. Ready for another? This is the best symposium I've been to in a while. You know what? I like you. Who brought you here? I brought myself. I'm on the trail of a woman who fled Sparta a long time ago. Fled? Why? She lost two children. She had no choice. She fled to heal a broken heart. Every Pivis, write her into a play. I've heard Spartan mothers go to a sanctuary in Argolis to beg Asclepios for his divine pity. I should know it's my home. After what she went through, I'm not sure she would trust priests. Oh, then she sought my friend, Hippocrates. He's a physician, best of the best. He still keeps his office in Argos. If she went to him for help, there's no doubt he'd have given it. I love getting drunk and singing. Come back if you want to sing with me. I'll think about it. Hippocrates in Argos. Here I come. Dionysus, there you are. Everyone else here is boring. Let's play a singing game. You like to sing? You like to sing. What did you have in mind? One of us will sing, then the other, and then back again. We'll take turns making verses, and whoever makes the best is the winner. Let's do this. I want to play too, but who should start? Every Pidi should start. It was his idea. Fine, fine, but let's do a good one. A battle song? Is there any other kind? At the flick of a limb comes a spacious whim, and Pericles' walls aim to contain us all within. What Spartan families lose, they lose for duty. When Spartan fathers refuse, they refuse beauty. But the dangerous part are the Athenian darts who go for the meat when they should go for the heart. Oh, so bring your merchants and bring their butlers. If they be sons, they bring their fathers. This is war, war, war. Bring your murderers to the crimson quiver. Bring the helots if they be spillers. It is war, war, war. Without our fathers and mothers, we rose straight to Hades or the belly of Milos. We are alone, and so we row. For a short life, we row, row, row. <laughs> the stupid sweepers, the genius teachers, all just meats and juice and liver. So grab your spears and grab your daggers. Plunge them deep in. Heroes, they'll make us. This is war, war, war. This is... War, war, war! War, war, war! War, war, war! Enough, we 
Enough! You, you're a great singer! The best! <laughs> you should act in my plays. Here, take this to remember the occasion. This party has turned out much better than I ever could have expected. We should find Hippocrates in power. Ah, the mystios from the ostracism. Let your back. This has been useless, Chiare. to watch. Mm. Look at you. Such authority. Such aggression. I can see why Pericles has taken such an interest in you. Did you come to join us? It sounded like someone was in pain. Well, it can sometimes be hard to distinguish between sounds of pleasure and pain. Had I known you were going to knock, I would have left my door wide, wide open for you. I thought this party was tame, even by Athenian standards. Until now. Let them have their meeting of the minds. I'm more interested in meeting other parts. Ali! We're out of oil again. Ali? You know they like you when they give you a pet name. There's more olive oil in the kitchen. But Aspasia keeps complaining about me walking unencumbered through her symposiums. You mean naked? Mm, it sounds so good when you say it. I come bearing gifts. <gasps> We're safe! Today, these women grieved for their sons, and these men worked the wall. But tonight, we forget all of that. Let's have some fun! What do you say? Care to join us? Time for some fun. You'll have to help me get out of my clothes. Gladly. If you like, we can feed them to the goat. There's another goat? <laughs> now it's time for you to help me, Ali. I'm looking for someone. All business, right until the end. I like that. Focus. I'm looking for a woman who fled Sparta a long, long time ago. Fled Sparta? No one flees Sparta. But let's pretend she did. If she were stupid, she'd be dead. If she were smart, she'd do what Aspasia did. She'd earn her independence. The smartest and most resourceful women I've ever met have been in Corinthia. Pietera? I've heard they play some sort of role in Corinth, but I assumed it was the same as any other city. Oh, no. These women are unlike any other you'll meet. A force, and the only ones there with any smarts. Ali! Come back inside! Ooh, the celebration continues. When you reach Corinth, find Anthusa. No one goes in or out of the city without her knowing. Until we meet again, warrior. Anthusa in Corinth. It's not much, but it's a start.
just got here. You can't leave already. How's every pedis? Drunk, I hope. You can stop hiding in here. Every pedis won't notice you coming out. He won't notice anything. Hiding? <laughs> Heed this. War has come to Athens. First they take our homes, then they take our heads. I intend to be found with at least my dignity intact. Or what's left of it anyway. If you see Pericles, tell him I said thank you for another colorful evening. Ah, here comes the one who claims to value Drachmi over the noble path that leads to knowledge. Like I told you, knowledge can't feed me. But the mind must be fed as well. You really intend to use this young destruction to avoid the point being argued? If you've been arguing this long and you haven't agreed yet, just give up. We're discussing the nature of rulers. We're better to do so than here. I'll ask you the same question I asked Thrasimachos. Would you agree that the act of ruling is an art? It is an art, as all worthy undertakings are. That is not up for argument. Yet, medicine is for the betterment of the patient and not the physician. Carpentry improves the building, not the builder. Then, is the art of ruling not for the betterment of the ruled rather than the ruler? Don't be absurd! I've seen enough of the world to know that there are no just rulers. Even Pericles is self-serving. Is a Spartan general who brings order to his troops, thereby saving his own life self-serving? I'm not sure that's the case. Ruling a city and fighting in battle are different things. By practicing the art of war, doesn't the general guarantee some of his troops a ferry ride to Hades, when a swift retreat would save all their lives? You just said a general isn't self-serving when he brings order to his troops. Then you said he is self-serving because retreating would save the lives of his men. What are you trying to say? I never try to say anything. But you just said those things. I said the words, but I didn't say anything at all. I only attempted to gain your view on the matter. You're wasting your time. Aspasia. I couldn't help but notice your talent for debate. Well done. Socrates is an interesting character. Ah, Phoebe. Pericles has retired to the balcony already, has he? His ability to sneak off and sulk is second to none. I can go get him, and Alexios can help. Everyone listens when he talks. That'll be fine. Run along. Alexios will be right behind you. Now, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Aspasia. I had to go to great lengths to cover up your work in Megaris. Your spies have been watching me. I knew you people couldn't be trusted. We do what we have to to survive, and there's no shame in that, believe me. Hm. You make an interesting choice, Alexios, in not dressing to fit in. Fit in? Fancy clothes wouldn't help me fit in. Your Athenian hitons are strange to me. You never really get used to them. It seems we have the attention of the entire room without a single eye being fixed on us. If you'd like to talk, do it now and do it discreetly. I'm searching for a woman who fled Sparta with her child years ago. I was hoping you might help. What clues do you have to her whereabouts? A physician named Hippocrates may have seen her in Argos. 
He's a good man. If you find a woman named Agathi there, do let her know Aspasia sends her regards. What else? Alcibiades gave me the name of a woman in Corinth. I'm sure he did. My dear friend, Anthusa, is the only one I know who's enjoyed a life in Corinth through legitimate means. Mostly legitimate, anyway. That's all I have. There is another option. In a former life, when I needed something done or someone found, I contacted a friend. An admiral of a sort. What's his name? Her name is Xenia. When we last spoke, she was in chaos. A word of caution. When you go to her, be on your guard. Sea life makes a monster out of most people. Thank you, Aspasia. When you're done, return here. Together, we will find who you're looking for. Now do me a favor and get Pericles to come down here and greet his guests. I'll help you however I can. Alexios. I don't recall sending for you, Mystios. Phoebe shouldn't have let you in here. Aspasia told me to come find you. She wants you to come down to the party. Uh, she says I don't interact with our guests enough. But these parties aren't for me. Technically, you're a guest. If you join Erodos and me, that should be enough for her, don't you think? You really don't want to go downstairs, do you? When your days are spent speaking in front of crowds, you begin to crave these moments of silence. Or as silent as I let it be, at least. <laughs> Phidias was awaiting trial, but you had me get him out of Athens. I figured you, of all people, would want to follow the law. Phidias is a very dear friend. I didn't want to risk him being found guilty. And, of course, there were other threats. So you knew? I know he's delusional, but... One day, when you have a friend you'd do anything for, you'll understand. I don't understand why you had Anaxagoras ostracized. Socrates said he was your friend. I won't risk the lives of those close to me if there's something I can do about it. So you did this to protect him? Anaxagoras understood my fears. Ten years may be a long time, but at least he'll be safe. Why send Meteochos to the fishing district if it's dangerous? I would never have sent him into danger willingly. It seems you have many loyal friends. My people are important to me. Your life is in danger. Yes, yes, Erodos was saying. This cult doesn't worry me. I have my life threatened by far worse people every day. My true concern is Athens. I fear for her future. The Spartans aren't your real concern, Pericles. The cult is coming, and they're bringing their strongest weapon. Listen to him, Pericles. The Spartans are immediate. A cult's threat is ambiguous. I'm... related to one of the cult members. And I believe her when she says they're coming after you. Sound counsel to consider. I'll be sure to let my men know, regardless. Aspasia sent me to see what's taking you so long. Tell Aspasia I'll be right there. I suppose this is where our conversation ends. Thank you again for helping me. I hope my guests are able to help you in your search. Time will tell.
tired. Only of conversation. I think that's the most talking I've ever done. See? You didn't need a weapon after all. Are you leaving? I've had enough Athenian hospitality to last me a lifetime. You get used to it. It's nice. What are you going to do now? There is a woman in Corinth I'd like to talk to. I've heard about that place from Alcibiades. He says you... ...does. Before you go, I heard something from Aspasia. About Kefalonia. What is it? She said there was some sort of plague. You don't think... My friend, the blood fever. Don't think like that. Whatever happened on Kefalonia isn't our fault. I'll go myself and find out if this plague even happened, okay? Okay, thanks. I knew I could count on you. Not going to beg to come along this time? Nope. I'm happy here. And this isn't Kefalonia. That means you'll be back. That's very true. Plus, I really like working for Aspasia. She says she has a mission for me. I'll see you soon, Phoebe. Bye, Alexios! You catch the latest gossip? We're being sent to guard the ship.